I've yet to hear anything that convinced me that Iowa would be a better place to live and raise a family. Thank you. Of course, we have the one about the property tax assessments, which is the one that is giving us the most trouble, and I definitely, and I think most all of us definitely want to do something about this session as to how we can equalize and make more fair the property tax assessments between ag land and the residential property. There's no way in the world we will have fulfilled our responsibilities by that time. We won't even have taken care of the democratic priorities they talked about when the session started. For example, land use will have no chance of being considered. Uh, uh, mandatory deposits, uh, the so-called ban the can bill, will not be considered. Adjournment plans have been made before, remember the push for May 1st. But this time it sounds serious. And after all, it's only temporary adjournment. A special session of the General Assembly will return in June to settle a pending pay raise bill. Dick Voss, News 5. Every weekday, grade school children here in Madrid cross this intersection on Highway 17. The intersection doesn't have any stoplights, and city officials here in Madrid say they feel it isn't safe enough. Well, uh, we haven't been, been able to meet the deadline simply because we don't have the, uh, the academic or the engineering criteria to meet the DOT requirements for the USTEP program. Uh, I was under the impression that, they, that uh, the requirements weren't set, but in fact they are. They're set uh, and they do need, you need an engineered plan and you need some requirements that can all be compiled by a consultant. And I'm not a consultant nor am I qualified in, in a qualified engineer either, so I couldn't do that type of work. Unless someone gets killed or seriously injured here, it looks like the city of Madrid will have to come up with money for an engineering study and wait a year or more to make what some consider to be a dangerous intersection safe. Phil Bell, News 5. My estimate is that it would be about three years from there and not more than five, and we would pretty much have, uh, I say, largest amount of uh, country already metricated at that point. Okay, fine.
<laughs> she misses a ball. So over here is college. It makes some sense to go to productivity. Uh, we have been hesitant to jump that direction because uh, we felt that it could well be that many others would have to pick up the difference. But we find now that uh, with price of commodities as it is, that there wouldn't be that great shift. And so the farmer. There really isn't any reason why 8 to 5 has to be uh, so rigidly adhered to. There are families who were in both the mother and father work, and if one of those people can come into work at 10 o'clock and work till 6, or come in at 9, and, or rather 7, come in at 9 and work till 6, that will have a, I just think it will ease a lot of tensions in people's families. I think those uh, those thinking and reasonable persons um, recognize that we are unnecessarily giving criminal records to uh, to principally young people uh, for something that cannot be shown to be uh, dangerous. Look at us, And you might think you're kidding the people of the state of Iowa by having a 7.5% cap and said it's not going to affect your assessed valuation. But believe me, a year from now, that's going to come home.
And when a homeowner in the city of Des Moines or Waterloo or Davenport that's paying $1,200 a year on their property tax, and it goes $1,800, explain that shift that didn't exist. When you month, and it goes up $10 a month, he don't really know what happened to it in, the, in Polk County. And I had a guy call me the yesterday out in the lounge. And if I, we'll vote our pocketbook. Of the agricultural problem are doing the, something like we've done. Is it? Yes, you that 13% is going to be placed on the homestead of know if there is a uniform officer walking the uh, largest percent of them on our two night shifts and we'd like to get it so we could have a, a minimum of five officers working on each shift which would give us at least one officer to be walking on central campus and hopefully we can get enough by this fall to do that and uh, it will probably be about three more officers we'll need in order to reach that goal We've decided that we should try to get out of this ourselves if we can, and then if we can't, then we'll have to go to the supervisors. What's going to happen uh, to the fair if you sell the land? Can you get along without it? Oh, yes. We can exist without this land. We thought that maybe we could sell part of it and keep part of it. What's going to happen if you can't sell the land? We're not sure what's going to happen then. I think that'll be, we'll have to wait for time and see what progress is along, along this line. Fair board officials hope that they can sell the land within a couple of weeks. If they don't, they're going to have to find another way to pay off their debt. They do stress, however, that one way or another, they want to clean up this mess by next fall. From Marshalltown, Gary Shapiro, News 5. They uh, uh, wanted us to take uh, the uh, touch-tone phones uh, on condition that we would get free color by taking touch-tone at that time. Only a few hours later, they opened up with advertising that everybody could have free color with touch-tone or with any kind of telephone for that matter. They proposed that we ask the customer whether or not he or she wants to be told of the lowest price service alternatives available. 
We not only agree with that, we propose to uh, go one step further and tell the customer what that lowest price to service alternative is. The guy from the Farmers Home yeah. Administration, I called him. First of all, of course, the limited resources of, of the people themselves, at least the ones that, that we interviewed in this study, there's also reluctance on their part to incur debt. And uh, there's also some independence and pride that uh, prevail in smaller rural communities that certainly has a, an effect. You're going to look at the cost of this project. What cost is involved when we turn down 300 students in horticulture every nine weeks, every quarter, in the biggest agriculture state in the nation? What cost is that?